Hi there, I am Isabella Suarez. And I am Carmen Beatriz Reyes. Before telling you a brief recount of the book we read, you may ask, what is the story about? So, A Family Tragic Comic is a graphic memoir by Alison Bechtel, tracing her journey from young girl to young adult as she comes to grip with her own lesbian sexuality. This life story is plus rejection and acceptance in various situations where family is fundamental for the shaping of her identity. We can resume this seven chapter story in four age parts. Her childhood. The memoir starts with Alison as a young girl playing with a father who she compares to both Dialus, the genius inventor of Greek myth, and Icarus, Dialus' son, who flew too close to the sun on wings designed by his father and plummeted to his death. A metaphor that really defines such father-daughter detective relationship. Bruce is the person whose attitude chafer. As a fighter of the World War II who inherited a funeral home, Allison details Bruce's obsession with restoring the family's old gothic revival house, which she believes was largely motivated with, by his desire to keep up the appearance of being a good Christian family man, even as he was also secretly having romantic affairs with underage boys. Her father's relationship with his mother, Helen, is similarly strained, although John Allison has no idea why. Here, we can start noticing this part of her identity, as she hates feminine clothing and would prefer to cultivate a masculine safe image. This trait puts her at odds with Bruce, who wants his daughter to look and behave normally. Of course, she was the only girl in a man dominating world by two brothers and one sissy father. Her adolescence. As an adolescent, Allison continues to want a masculine image and war role while Bruce still desires to express something feminine in her. When Allison experiences puberty, she resents the growth of her breasts. When she first menstruates, she keeps it a secret from everyone and doesn't write about it in her diary. When she goes to high school, she ends up becoming a student in her father's English class. This period is a time of bonding between the two as Alison comes to enjoy the books her father assigned her to read. This new bond over literature lasts through Alison's first semester in college. A writing skillful lapse starts when Alison decided to write a poem about nature and Bruce adds a stanza onto it. Later, in a similar incident, Alison was drawing in a coloring book when Bruce got upset that she was using the wrong color, causing him to take over and shade it in for her. Finally, these episodes of paternal rejections remain repetitive until she becomes an adult. Her adulthood. Alison leaves her hometown to attend college. Over time, Alison begins to realize she is a lesbian. At first, she researches her newfound sexuality from a distance with theoretical works. But after attending a queer student group meeting, Alison comes out as a lesbian, first to friends and then to her parents. Her father seems pleased, not shocked. It shouldn't surprise her as a hypocritical person with two lifestyles in one body could show. Her mother, however, is displeased and reveals to Alison that Bruce is gay and has been sexually involved with men and boys. A flashback here emerged. When she was 13, Bruce's secret almost surfaced 
when he offered a young boy a beer while searching for the boy's older brother, who was most likely Bruce's lover. Surely, a younger girl wouldn't notice in such restrictive parental times. Later on, around the time of her midterms, Alison becomes involved with her first girlfriend, John, a poet. John not only mentors Alison's sexuality, but also changes her perception of literature by offering radical interpretation of well-known stories. She exemplified this with an incident where she and her friend Beth dressed in boys' clothes, which Lowe thought it was short-lived. During a spring break, Alison makes an effort to connect with her father. The closest they come to doing so is during the drive to the local movie theater, where they have a conversation about their respective identities. After a file attempt to go to a gay bar together after the movie, Bruce and Alison never again discuss their sexuality. The last time Alison sees Bruce alive, she introduces him and Helen to her girlfriend, John. The final age. When Summer arrives, Alison and John move in together. Shortly thereafter, Alison learns from Helen that her parents are getting a divorce. Two weeks later, Alison is in a library when she receives a call from home. Helen informs Alison that Bruce was struck by a truck on the highway and killed. The death is considered an accident and the truck driver claims Bruce stepped back onto the road as if he saw a snake. Alison, however, comes to believe it was a suicide, even wondered if it was caused by her coming out. Of course, she knows that this is when she decides to come out of the closet to her parents, which calls Helen in response to tell her the secret of Bruce's affair and sexuality. No other drastic fate could be expected from a man with controversial life secrets. Alison reflects that she and her father were close, but not close enough, and they never discusses their sexuality again before Bruce's death. The story ends with an image of her jumping off a diving board into a pool as a young girl, with Bruce there to catch her. Alison narrates that Icarus and Bruce did hurtle into the sea, but Bruce was there to catch Alison when she left. Now I am Andres Felipe Olaya and I will talk about the author of today's story. Let's focus in main aspects of her life that can help us to understand better her literary work. Alison Bechdel is a cartoonist born in 1960. Her literary work has been widely defined by her patience of comics. This 2006 commercial success, Fun Hum, a tragic comedy family, is a graphic memoir that allowed her to reach great acknowledgements. Let's go back in time. During the 80s, um, she managed to write a series of comics narrating lesbian characters with a feminist portrait of sexual identity issues. Her early works were single panel drawings, but then it evolved into multi-panel strips. At the beginning, stories were diverse in representing members of the sexual minorities, and then her urban lesbian community came up the spot in the latest works during the 90s. Surely, she had to dedicate more time to create autobiographical strips for other characters for magazines and websites. Nevertheless, the economic benefits from the commercialization of previous works allow her to abandon her job to make most of the time illustrating comic strips. This change on priorities is well reflected in Fun Hum with an art technique that register her memories for readers to catch the moments, the transitions and the character description throughout the story. Let's return to the present. It should be noted how Fang Han made her 
to receive more recognition in the lesbian community as it was held as the best book of 2006 by the New York Times, Amazon, The Times of London, and Entertainment Weekly. Even so, Fun Home was also nominated for the Best Graphic Album Award and Bechdel was nominated for Best Writer Artist. Let's see the aftermath. Such recognition for the story plot and art display was translated into Fun Home being premiered as a musical off-Broadway at the Public Theatre on September 13 of 2013 and opened officially in October 22 of 2013. The score was by Janine Tessery and the book and lyrics were written by Lisa Cron. Cron and Tessery made history as the first all-woman team to win a Tony Award for Best Score. Not up, her time with his father during the English classes in high school marked a moment in her literary life that still has an impact for the representation of her identity and others across the United States. I guess I'm older, and it's harder when you're older to begin. Peeling plaster, sagging roof, two missing stairs, a buckle wall. I'm fired up to do this, but on my own. Oh, so much damage, broken windows, pipes are shit, crap veneer. It's hours later, Jesus, I'm still standing here. A stylistic features. Moving right past that, I am Juan David Cerquera and I will talk about the stylistic features of the graphic memoir. Three aspects determine the style of it, this story. It is highly descriptive, realistic and metaphorical. First, once the reader starts the story, description of people, places, objects and events occur with suitable details. As the author is an excellent comic drawer, it uses a descriptive writing style as a means of enhancing the reading experience. One is in it simplifies a key element. So Bruce Aptop's illustration enables the reader to use taste, smell, hearing, sight and touch for the reader to develop an emotional connection. Here, mind reactions keep the reader concentration on the understanding of every moment during the memoir of Addison. Second, while the reader continues with the story, the portrayal of mundane everyday experiences that happen in real life makes the reader to think on social issues. The content of Hum Hum depicts familiar people, places and stories that go to the root of the social issues illustrated. In this case, the presentation of a life transition towards self-identity from a middle-class lesbian woman in Pennsylvania is a powerful source of association that explores what others in society can suffer, making it more real and intense for the public. Furthermore, it shows how hard life circumstances can be represented without dramatizing it or romanticizing it. It's still with an impact that makes the reader to interpret, analyze, and build conclusions. Third, after the reader finishes the story, some references that were not clear while reading it makes more sense like when you watch movies or cameos or easter eggs. Those are introduced to attach the reader mind with other literature experiences enjoyed. Overall, the number of degree of literary references in Fun Home is outstanding, and these references are not simply one of the quotes. As the writer of her memoir, Alison weaves into the fabric of her book references to the myth of Daedulus and Icarus. Daedulus and the Minotaur, referencing to the Scott Fitzgerald and the Great Gatsby, and to James Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man and Ulysses. 
She examines how the world around her is similar and different from the events and characters in these stories, and uses those similarities and differences to tease out an understanding of her father, mother, and the world, working out her understanding of reality through this relation to fiction and literature. For example, one of the first character impressions is related with Bruce described as Robert Redford by Allison. On the one hand, the actor appearance in the 1974 movie The Great Gatsby is a clear example of those references like she said, like my father fooled his transformation with the colossal vitality of his illusion unlike Gatsby. He did it on a school teacher's salary. On the other hand, Robert Redford's raised in a religious family in a middle class neighborhood could be a connection to the character story. To finish with this video presentation of On Home, I am Andres Felipe Niño Gonzalez and I am going to talk about the thematic discussion. Surely, certain topics presented in the author's memoir need a deepened discussion to understand the social issues' implication for the character's development in the decisions and actions that are relevant to make drastic life changes. Actually, a fundamental question arises to appeal this discussion. How the topics of self-acceptance and self-rejection are explored in the story and how family may be helpful or obstructed in the process? To answer the first part of the question, self-rejection is illustrated when a person lies to himself or herself in a constant denial of preferences and orientations. When one explores her childhood, there is a clear example when she becomes aware of the way that she is different. For instance, her attraction to the Bosch lesbian she sees in a restaurant as a five-year-old and her father is approval of their attraction. This recognition of different leads to shame and a denial of her true self. She lies to her father and says that she does not want to look like the lesbian in the restaurant. The aftermath of denial leads to create rituals around dressing and undressing, passing through doorways and avoiding certain numbers. She also compulsively begins to write daily journal entries in a diary, even her journal entries turn over time from truthful to obscure to inaccurate, mirroring her repressed state. Contrary, Exploring self-acceptance starts to come up to a bright spot as she grows up and realizes the hard truth of her family environment after leaving home. During her adulthood, especially in the college, she finds an environment that allows her to see herself as something other than a monster. At Oberlin, she explores her sexuality in depth, first intellectually delving into books on the subject, then socially joining her college gay union and becoming a part of the gay and lesbian campus community, and finally physically, when she begins a relationship with Joan, her first girlfriend. Alison eventually eliminates her final repression and writes a letter to her parents in which she comes out of the closet as a lesbian. Of course, a sign of independence is helpful as she becomes matured to see the world with different eyes. In the same way, self-rejection and self-acceptance go in parallel when analyzing Alison and Bruce. In this case, Bruce's self-rejection is clear as its sexual orientation always remained hidden when looking at the relationship he held for years with young men lovers. Contrary, Alison's self-acceptance evolves. Her sexual orientation emerges as she grows up and becomes mature and independent to assert her identity and take part in the lesbian community. For the second part of the question, family is the finally obstructed in a hypocritical way that is depicted as Alison grows. There are multiple examples. One is seen clear affirms how disruptive family rules can diminish one's identity. So in this scene, she tries to comment on Bruce's clothing in a positive way to make him look better. Nevertheless, as her father leaves the table with no words but face look of anger, her mother jumps on the screen to tell her children to avoid any comments attacking her father. Not surprisingly, she thinks how possible affection can be shown if a simple comment makes a story in a teacup. Then, her identity cannot be expected to raise if there is a negativity of emotion and display in her home. However, a short moment of family support emerges when she comes out and her mother is honest about her sexuality, a moment of reveal and strength from Alison that inspired Helen to tell the truth. Despite this revelation, her destructive family diminished her openness during the most important life stages in her childhood and teenage years. Thanks a lot for your attention. This is the end of our video presentation, we hope that you really like it, bye!